We've, uh, for a little over a year now, we've been producing approximately a video a week on, on life as it was in the 18th century. In our time periods, mid 1700s. But uh, we're changing it up a little bit on this episode because we're on a modern moose hunt. I'm still in my 18th uh, century clothes because I just like it. But tomorrow, the moose hunt actually opens tomorrow morning. So I'll be dressed in blaze orange, modern, what have you. And although we hunt, um, like our deer hunting, turkey hunting, small game with period clothes and with, with flintlocks, um, it's a pretty big investment for us, this moose hunt. So we, we hunt with center fire rifles and in, uh, in a modern way. So we've got our modern tent here and some real nice accoutrements compared to what I'm used to. Uh, to explain where we are in the world, we're, we're about 100 miles north of Pickle Lake. And Pickle Lake's the farthest you can drive uh, in northern Ontario. So at, at a point just below Pickle Lake, you cross uh, uh, St. Joseph Lake, which is the headwaters for the Albany River. And the Albany River flows and empties into James Bay, at the top end of James Bay. So in the late 1600s, the Hudson Bay Company built a fort there. They also built a fort at the headwaters at Lake St. Joseph. Um, um, can't quite remember the name of the one there. Uh, Abenot, Obenot House, I believe it was called. Uh, anyway, we're a long way north, and tomorrow the hunt starts, and we're per we're pretty pumped. Um, we, although we're doing it modern, not a lot changes if you think about it. Um, we need shelter. Uh, we need uh, food, clothing. Um, I'll take a wander over and show you a, a wood stove we made for our little tent here, so it's pretty comfortable. But we use a lot of traditional things. For example, um, we build a lot of things out of birch bark, um, but we make our own birch bark calls. Uh, we build canoes, baskets, what have you. I have to get Kathy to help me with this project. I can do a lot of them myself, but my hand isn't tiny enough to get down in that little tube. So she does about the first four uh, X's of the lacing on this guy. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be going out tonight uh, just at dusk, making a call again tomorrow morning, just before dawn. And hopefully we're gonna attract in either a cow or a bull because we got tags for both. So we'll have a look at my wood stove over here. So this was kind of a fun little project. Um, we took a, it's actually an old uh, machinist toolbox from the turn of the century, so 1900s, early 1900s. Uh, we welded the top closed, cut a little hole for the stovepipe, found an old door from a Finley cook stove, so it's got our draft and what have you on it. And uh, yeah, we put four legs on that we can adjust for the undulations in the earth to make the top level so my, my coffee pot doesn't roll off. Anyway, uh, yeah, it works pretty good. And then on this side, we made a little uh, reservoir here with a tap on it that we put our hot water in. So we got hot water for dishing, uh, dishwashing, washing our hands and what have you in the morning. And we've got a means of cooking and keeping the tent dry and warm. So although it's, uh, it's modern, by a lot of standards, it's still the same things that would have been required if one was doing it in 1750. But I must admit it's a tad, a tad more comfortable than some of the shelters I've lived in. Uh, we've had quite a bit of inclement weather, a lot of rain. We've been reconnoitering for moose for a few days and uh, I think about all the trekking I've done in my lifetime, like historic trekking, often with no shelter at all. So this thing rather spoils me and it's, it's working out quite well. I mean, I'm gonna take a wander down to the lake and, uh, and I'll show you what some of the most beautiful boreal forest on this planet looks like. So typically on our hunts, we um, in our trekking, if it's summertime and waters haven't frozen up, we use uh, birch bark canoes that we build ourselves. But we take this uh, moose hunting pretty serious, so we got our little aluminum boat and a small motor. And we may or may not hunt the waters. Um, we were lucky enough to find a spot where there's actually access to the lake. There are literally thousands of lakes up here. Very few have access. There are no roads around them. Um, there's no cottages. There, in fact, there are no people. Uh, and it's boreal forest. It, it's a band of forest that goes around the, the globe across Canada, Alaska, and Russia. And if it weren't for our boreal forest, uh, we'd be in a lot more trouble, climate speaking, than we are because it absorbs so much carbon from the environment. Um, but it is pristine, pristine country. It took us a little over 30 hours of hard driving, three full days, to get here. Um, and we've got three weeks. We're allowing ourselves three weeks to uh, hopefully harvest a moose. Uh, we have found some sign up on higher ground, 
So I think opening day tomorrow, we're going to be hunting that first, but two or three days in that area, if we haven't had any luck, we may start to hunt from the waters. Anyway, we're, we're pretty pumped about this hunt, and uh, hopefully we have both a cow and a bull tag, which is very unusual, and there's just the three of us. So my good friend, Charlie Cadman, and my wife, Kathy, and I, so uh, we'll be quite happy to get one. We won't, uh, we won't harvest two. That's, uh, that's just being greedy, even though we could. So we just need to see one or the other, and uh, we'll have our winter's meat. To give you an idea what it's like to walk in boreal forest, it's like um, if you were walking on a continuous trampoline. So this, um, this material here, the moss and what have you, Essentially, we've got 11,000 years of buildup of organic matter, and it is the softest thing on the planet to walk on. It's also quite easy to find moose tracks. Anyway, I'm off to find a, hopefully, a real good spot to start tomorrow morning's hunt with. There's a, a crazy amount of color in some of the fungi up here in this boreal forest. I have no idea what these are, but they're <laughs> most perfect mauve color I've ever seen. And the colors vary. They're almost like coral, coral reef. There's so many colors.
So we've been up here and at our moose hunt now for the better part of two weeks. And uh, yeah, bottom line is uh, unsuccessful. And not surprised because we've uh, we've been doing this for years and our, our average is about 20, 25%. So once every four to five years, we get a moose. Um, and if you think about moose in boreal forest, there's in a good management unit up here in Northern Ontario, Northwestern Ontario, there's 30, 35 animals per 100 square kilometers. So if one can find them and they can hear your call and the rut's on, you can call them out to you. Anyway, we were unsuccessful this time. So, which means we have to sort of double up when we get back uh, for our deer hunt or we're not gonna have any winter meat. So yeah, that's where that is. Anyway, interesting, if you look at the, at the, at the, um, the, uh, the ground that we walk on, it, when we first arrived here, when you when you stepped on this, it left an imprint. But we've had quite a bit of rain, and now when you step on it, it just springs right back. And it don't matter whether it was a moose or me. So I'm I'm 160 pounds, and a moose is about 1,200. But moose can walk on that, and you can't even tell where he's gone. Anyway, we're going to pack it up. We got three days long drive, but before we go, I'm harvesting a bunch of trees, um, and I'm, I'm digging out these black spruce. Um, I'm going to dig out, I don't know, 50 or 60 of them. And what I want to do is replenish, uh, for those who have been following our YouTube channel, um, we sort of devastated our, our little woodlot there. And uh, where we've cut the logs, we're going, to do, we're going to replace them with a bunch of these trees that we're going to take back. And this is, a, this is an amazing plant. Um, so we're, we're quite a ways north here. We're still below the Arctic Circle, but not that awful far from it. But about four or five years ago, uh, my wife Kathy and I did a trip down the Mackenzie River. And we started at Hay River. We did about 100 kilometers of the south shore of Great Slave Lake to the mouth of the Mackenzie. And then we did 1,300 miles or 2,200 kilometers to the Arctic Ocean. And we actually paddled across the, um, the Arctic Circle. And as you paddle north um, in the boreal forest, you see the species diminishing. So um, first it's the birch, they're gone, and then the poplar. And when it's all said and done, the only tree that's left standing, the only soldier left standing is that guy right there, the black spruce. Uh, an amazing plant. Um, natives used it particularly for the roots. Um, it is, we build birch bark canoes, but the best root comes from the black spruce. Um, we can use white spruce, we can use Norway spruce, we can even use jack pine. But the best root for bark building, basket building, uh, making moose calls um, comes from this particular plant. And once you get that far north, um, some of these trees may only grow 8, 10, 12 feet high, yet they can be a couple hundred years old. And if one cuts them down and you try to see growth rings like you'd see uh, in a normal tree, uh, it's just simply black, and maybe that's where the name came from, black spruce. I don't know. That part I don't know. But I do know they uh, they are um, a very vigorous growing tree further north, and uh, we're going to take a bunch of them back, and if they'll grow up here, they'll sure as heck grow down where we live. Anyway, we're going to be packing up. we got got three days of hard driving back south and east, and uh, we'll be home again and working back on uh, getting our cabin finished. I think I got a few buildings yet to do out there, some of, some of my outbuildings to do. Anyway, it's been a wonderful trip. So unsuccessful at Moose, but in terms of success, man, this has been, you know, if you get the opportunity or perhaps privilege is the better word to spend time in this kind of pristine wilderness, then man, yeah, it's, it's, it certainly can't be called unsuccessful. Anyway, I got some more digging to do. So I'm not sure what, what this plant is. I used to know the name of it. I have to look it up in my plant books when I get home. But it's a great fire starter. So it didn't matter whether you were an indigenous person, uh, trapper, hunter, uh, you carried a tinder bag. And this is a great fire starter. It makes a great bird's nest, uh, starts a fire real quick. So they'd always be looking for that and adding it to their tinder bag. The area that we've hunted on for these past two weeks is the ancestral grounds of both the Cree and the Ojibwe Indians. Uh, they were hunter-gatherers. Uh, they, they weren't agrarian in any way. They used to trade with the Huron. 
and the Huron were sort of the middleman when the French opened up the fur trade and established it with the Huron. Uh, in this fur-rich country up here, the Cree and the Ojibwe would trade their furs to the Huron, acting as a middleman to the French. Um, yeah, so pretty fascinating history, history there. Anyway, I'm going to gather a bunch of this for my fire starter kit. The other thing natives did, they'd take uh, clamshells and they'd open them up and they'd form clay in the bottom and the top. They'd put a rock in and close it, let the clay harden. They'd open that up, pitch the rock out. So now if they're going to travel from camp to camp, they'd take an ember from the fire, put it in the, place it in this cavity in the center of this clamshell, close up the clamshell, wrap it up with some leather lacing and put it in their kit and head off. Uh, so when they get to camp, they had a bit of that, they'd open up their clamshell, take out a live ember, add that to it. They had fire for cooking, something we kind of take for granted today. Anyway, I'm going to keep gathering. So obviously another great uh, fire starter is uh, is paper birch. Um, it's, it's a great, not only is it like paper, but uh, it'll crumble up quite fine for the bird's nest. It has a bit of resin in it as well, so it, it's a great fire starter. So that's going to go in my kindling bag, and there we got a bird's nest right there. Anyway, we were hoping that the uh, run out of this episode was going to be our successful moose hunt, and 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 it wasn't. But, but uh, what we have for you is a whole bunch of sequences that Kathy has worked her magic with the camera. She's been out and about taking pictures of the flora and fauna of this very beautiful area that, uh, yeah, we'll be back next year and trying again for that moose every four or five years.